Jeff is after Bill. No. Bill's on. You want to go on first or Tony? So the order's going to be myself, Tony, the fabulous Tony Air Force guy. He had a son who went to West Point, so at least he's got one smart kid. And then Fred, my good friend Fred. So I'm Bill Conrad. I'm the president of Red Move. I've been behind the scene probably for 12 years since I got here. A lot of AVs, a lot of experiments. Um, I'm president of the National Association of Podcasters, which is all about freedom of speech. And we've had our freedom of speech destroyed by this country, by this leadership, by this government. And if we lose freedom of speech, we've lost our country. We're about to lose our country, folks. We're becoming very close. I want to go back to, go back to talk about just two things. First, why did I come to Reno, Nevada? And you'll learn a little bit about me why I came here. And the second thing, I want to compare myself to the front runner of the Senate campaign. So I'm Bill Conrad again. You go to electrogreenberet.com. I probably should stand right here because I know better about the camera. And you'll find everything about me, my platform, everything written down in background. But why I came to Reno. So it all started. <laughs> I went to West Point for four years. I served on active duty close to nine years. My last, I was a Green Beret. But I also went to flight school at 27 years old and served in the 1-6th Special Operations Aviation. Almost got killed a few times. Things happened. I was doing drug interdiction in the Bahamas and landed in front of a guy with an AK-47. My DEA agent would not jump out. I was flying for the DEA on loan. And it was the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. I pulled pitch and no one got out of the aircraft, no suppression, we got out of there. So that was my first real experience with getting a real close call, uh, getting shot at. So I came back, I looked at my son who was young, and I thought, you know, I love to fly, I love the military, uh, but I'd like to do some other things. So I said, let me go to the one air rescue, flying my same aircraft, three places I could live. I could live in uh, California, I could live in Alaska, or New York, Suffolk, New York. The unit in Suffolk, New York lost a pilot almost immediately when they got their new aircraft. I went to fly at Moffett Field. I stayed there for a long time in the Air National Guard, have a lot of close friends. And then the war broke out. I had a design build construction company. Now here's the first thing you'll learn about me. As a city councilman for almost six years, that's important. I'm one of two candidates who has a voting record. Just look at my voting record and you'll see my core values and my conservatism, period. And my belief in free markets and people. Just look at the voting record. Call anybody in Modesto, California, or as a city council for almost six years. Two things I did there specifically. No one called, no one dug in and saw what was wrong with the taxes. So the city of Modesto was overcharging taxes. Anytime they needed to fill their general fund, they would just charge more in sewer and water. That's all they do. They just add a, you can only charge by law only 20% over your hard cost. They would jack that up to 40 and 50%. I said, that's against the law. I called it. No one, everyone hated me when I did it initially at least on council, and the establishment definitely hated me. But we won that, and we got it down, and they got sued, and they ended up going back to 20%, saving the taxpayer a lot of money. Actually, there was a settlement where they had to pay back from the taxpayer. The second thing I did was, when I was in Special Forces, my best man and roommate uh, became a DEA agent, so we stayed in contact. Our police, and I've got to watch how much I say here, we're taking evidence weapons and reselling them, someone from the police department. And I tracked them down through a friend, and we did research, and we found out what was happening. Our police department was corrupt. I, I called immediately for the chief of police to be fired, and everybody slammed me on city council. Everybody. But the people didn't. The people who voted, and by the way, the city manager, the, 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 the chief of police resigned in two, two weeks. But ironically, which blows my mind, is the supervisors, called commissioners here, hired him to run post. Like, what in the world did they do? So that drove me nuts. It was all politics going on in Fort Worth. And finally, uh, running in a city, uh, my hat's off to these people running for city, because you have to deal with the builders, which I was one. I ran a design build construction company. You have to build with public employees, public safety, and you have to build with the trash people. <laughs> so those are really challenges. And those are special interests. And one thing I learned, um, I had worked myself up in the building industry. I was vice president of the building industry of Central California. And I thought the builders would be the most pro-free enterprise marketing people in the world, but they're not. They'll do anything they can to have government and builders work together to make more money for the builders. 
and for certain builders to control everything while other builders controlled nothing. There were five attorneys, and these attorneys controlled the city through some of the biggest special interests. I won't say specifically who they are, but you can guess out of, out of Nevada who they were. Not Nevada, but out of California who they were. Modesto, California. Just look up who the biggest corporate companies are there. There's some really big corporate companies. And what happens is most of the people in, in, in that city, they work six months in the canneries and six months on unemployment or in the wineries. So it's really a labor hardcore town. It leaned Democrat, but as a Republican, I stayed true to Republican principles. And this is what I want to get to next. Republican principles will, will win elections. So I would say to any Republican running across the state or any place or running for city council, don't back off your core Republican principles of limited government and empowering people. I am so happy to see our party starting to work towards the worker, working people, the hardest working people going. And finally, I'm going to close uh, with two things. I said I was going to compare myself to the front runner. We're, two things I'm comparing here. We're both West Point grads. We both served in Afghanistan. I was a lieutenant colonel, he was a lieutenant. My area of operations shifted, and his unit, who I knew as commander, and a lot of people in his unit, shifted out to the south. We shifted to the north along the border, one of the most dangerous places in Afghanistan. I know what he went through. My heart goes up to him what happened. His driver was killed. He served for about 30, 90 days. I served 38 months in Afghanistan. But the other things I do, I bring more than just what a lieutenant's vision would be. I worked with refugees, I have civil military operations. I worked between the State Department and the Army. I'm a civil affairs officer, Green Beret often becomes civil affairs. I had left the Air National Guard because they wouldn't leave me on active duty in the Air Force, gone back to the Army where I have a lot of friends who are one-star generals and colonels. I got key assignments and I worked in a lot of different places from the Defense Threat Reduction Agency so I know what the threat was. I know what the threat is. We're gonna get hit by terrorists, period. We're gonna hit it, it's just a matter of time. Back when I was in the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, we, had, we were monitoring six or seven cells out here, and there's a lot of rules you have to follow when you're in the military in that position. But there's got to be hundreds of cells right now, especially with the open border and with the Chinese coming across. And then, finally, I came back. Why did I come in to Reno, Nevada? I came here because I could go anywhere after serving in the military and getting out of active duty and being a GS. And I drug my family out of California because they did like California. But I love Reno, and I love the valley, I love the people. And, I, and for my kids, my girls, my young girls who went to Roy Gome and Swope starting, they had a great life here, they love it here too. Uh, my daughter is a cowgirl, and she's now a first lieutenant stationed and graduated from West Point and stationed in, Fort, uh, in um, Colorado Springs. And then my youngest is about to graduate in 100 days. So West Point was a wonderful, not West Point, but Reno was a wonderful place to raise my kids. They went to Reno High School. They loved the mountains. They loved the fish. They loved the hike. They loved the ski. They loved everything about here. And then finally, my comparison to finishing up. So I talked about Lieutenant, who they put out as Captain Brown. Why is Captain Brown, who came from Texas, who loved Texas and never leave Texas, who failed tremendously after raising a lot of money in Texas, coming here, he ran against Amade. First thing, not Amade, he ran against. Um, Laxel, first thing, right off the bat. You gotta be smart, folks. He's a career politician. He says he's not a politician. That's his first flip flop. I'm not a politician. He is a politician. I've seen politicians. I've been around politicians. He is a politician. Tony Grady and I are both politicians, but we don't say we're not politicians. Tony's a great guy, by the way. I heads off to him. He had a great son that went to West Point. So that's, that's one thing. He is a politician. He says he's not, but he is. So that goes back to the core values of Republican issues. I am so concerned about our party moving away from the pro-life stance. We should never apologize for being pro-life. And because, never just, I mean, the Democrats are the pro-death party up to nine months. And I think that's really critical and really important that we don't apologize, because if we don't apologize, we can attack them for being pro-death. I'm gonna leave you with that. We need to stand fast by Republican values of limited government, freedom, freedom of speech, the Constitution, and the things that make America great. Stand firm on pro-life, and don't ever apologize for what you believe in. And with that, I'm going to introduce Tony Grady. Tony, get up here. He has two sons, one with the Naval Academy. I don't know. He's a Marine. That's only a good thing. And the other son went to the West Point. 
One last thing, his son and my son, both are in the military still and they didn't take the COVID shot. We, and I wanna tell you, we went through this together so we got to know each other really well and we can tell you what happened and how well they did. But as you know, Tony, that COVID shot wiped out all the colonels and the generals who were good leaders because they left the military and were forced out. We lost a lot of good people, but our kids survived. Without further ado, one of the nicest people and a good leader and a politician, Tony Grady. And one, one, one last thing, I'm gonna say something that blow your mind. And you take, don't take this out of context, but uh, I'm gonna endorse Fred Simon tonight. So I know you saw this man Mountain here talk to you, right? He's, he's intimidating in the classroom, so they'll listen to him. But the reason I had him up here is because this is the future. I remember when he came, and the first time he talked to me, he said, I want to do something in politics. And I started talking to him, and I said, look at the school board. You've taught. Well, now he's standing in the gap. And I want everybody to give him a round of applause. <laughs> then I want everybody to donate to his campaign. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's my pleasure to be here. I just got out of Las Vegas, got out of there with my life. I'm Tony Grady, and I'm running to defend the American dream. That's why I'm here. I'm here to defend the American dream for my family and your family, for my children and your children, for my grandchildren and your grandchildren, because the Democrats are destroying our country. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work with people to seal the border. I'm gonna work with people to drill and get more energy. And I'm gonna work with people to get the United States back in its proper place on the world stage so we can have more peace. That's what I'm gonna work on as your next United States Senator. But why can you trust me? You can trust me because of this. I've been married to the same woman for 40 years. And she hasn't thrown me out. And she's pretty quiet, but in her, you're, in her eyes, you will see that she's thought about it many times. We have four children. And children don't listen. I went to the Air Force Academy as Bill was making fun of it. And I have to admit something. The Air Force Academy was modeled after West Point. <laughs> but I went to the Air Force Academy and the oldest went to Annapolis. And the baby went to West Point because children don't listen. <laughs> and in the middle I have a molecular biologist and I have one who's been running her own personal training company for about six years. My kids are successful, but this isn't about doting on them. This is about the fact that I know how to help young people be successful. And we need to elect leaders that want all American children to be successful. So I'm standing here today, and I'm telling you that I can beat Jackie Rosen. But I can't beat Jackie Rosen by myself. We are a team. We are Republicans. We have values. My dad in foreign service enabled me to live in Africa. And I graduated from high school in Bangkok, Thailand. So I saw communism and socialism. I became patriotic. I went to the Air Force Academy, became a pilot, became a test pilot. I commanded the B-2 Stealth Bomber Test Squadron. Now somebody crawled on me the other day because a lot of you really don't know about test pilots. But let me tell you that in the 1950s, they buried multiple people weekly as we were investigating the sonic barrier, as we were trying to find out what happened with flying qualities of airplanes as you went faster and faster and faster. A quick story along those lines that 
relates more to me is that I've flown 47 airplanes, but one of my favorite was the FB-111. So if you guys don't remember that, it looks like a ugly airplane when its wings are out, and then they sweep back and it looks like a arrowhead. Well, when they first came out with the 111 in Vietnam, it was the Widowmaker. Crashed. People were dying left and right. They sent the airplane back to Edwards Air Force Base, and a captain engineer found out that the F-111 in its TFR system, back for all of you old people that understand integrated circuits, it was oriented up and down. So the TFR is designed to follow the terrain. When it would follow the terrain, it was like pushing over in a roller coaster. That circuit card floated. And when it floated, the radar was not getting any data. So the airplane would crash into the ground. A captain flight test engineer discovered that. They took it, rotated it 90 degrees, end of statement. So the point is, is that I come from a world of the unknown. I come from a world of where there is hazards. And in that $24 billion test program that I was the commander of, we had no accidents. It will go down as one of the most successful test programs in all time. And it's that leadership that I want to take to Washington to defend Nevadans, to defend the interests of those who would destroy our country. The other thing I did was I worked on the air staff in the Pentagon. I was responsible for the bomber portion of the president's budget. I was the bomber expert and got generals ready to talk before the House and the Senate Armed Services Committee. So I was the guy in the, right there in the hot seat that helped the generals out to make sure they didn't get torn apart. So after working in the uh, Air Force 20 years at FedEx, I understand business, ran my own biotech company for 11 years. So why do I say that I can beat Jackie Rosen? I want you all to understand that I am the only Republican candidate that can talk about foreign policy and the diplomatic instrument of power, military strategy and the military instrument of power, economics and the economic instrument of power. So I am Tony Grady. I'm running to be your next United States Senator. Please go to Tony Grady for Nevada.com and take a look at my positions. Thank you for having me here tonight. Good evening. I'm Dr. Fred Simon. My career has been as a trauma surgeon, been a medical legal expert all over the United States. The past 20 months, I have traveled the United States. I was up in Trump country in New Hampshire part of the summer, Massachusetts, Maine, South Dakota, North Dakota, Colorado, all over America looking at what's going on. And I'm going to tell you that we have a government, and it's on both sides of the aisle, that aren't doing anything for the American people. They're all connected to the billionaires and the multi-global companies. Here's the deal. You, as taxpayers, subsidize tobacco. You subsidize big ag. You subsidize big pharma, who's trying to kill us, pushing a vaccine that has a genetic makeup similar to snake venom. We subsidize Amtrak. We subsidize almost everything you can think of other than the American people. There is no debt ceiling. It's a fraudulent term. And look at our politicians 
and one in mind, Mark Amaday. He supports the liberal Republicans and votes for the agenda of the Biden administration, and he and Kevin McCarthy got nothing, nothing for the conservatives. What do you hear from the politicians in Nevada? Where is Amade on immigration? Okay, if we don't elect Donald Trump, and if we don't enforce federal law 8 U.S.C. 1103, which is Homeland Security stops them, puts them through the judicial system, and that's it. That's what Trump did. Mark Amade stands for nothing. Now, I've been with a lot of my colleagues in the last couple weeks and talking to a lot of citizens in Nevada and all over the country. And I made a decision in the last couple days and definitively today. I'm taking on the liberal Republican who does nothing, who's never done anything for Nevada or the United States, who's a liberal Republican, who's with Mitch McConnell, I'm going after Mark Amaday. And officially today, oh, Debbie, I love you. <laughs> so, so today, I was in the Secretary of State's office and I filed. Thank you. Enough is enough. Now, I gotta tell you, I look at Bill Conrad, and I look at Tony Grady. Look, we're not real politicians, but we're politicians now. Here's what we need, and there isn't one in the state of Nevada. We need a warrior for conservatives, yes. okay? Now, I was a nice guy during the gubernatorial race. That isn't who I am. Game on, Mark, okay? I will debate Mark Amaday any place, any time, on any issue, Tony, I know foreign policy, thank you. <laughs> Why are we subsidizing the world? Why are we subsidizing multinational corporations? And here's the bottom line. Look at what's happening. Inflation, look at the stock market. The highest reaping profits of all time. The packages got smaller, the prices go higher. They're going after us. They're taking away our wealth. There is no debt ceiling. This is all common political baloney. The money is going to the billionaires. It's all statistically there. I'm not talking any ideology, it's all facts. Look at it. They're all getting much richer and we're all getting much poorer. Okay, this is a technologic totalitarianism that's happening and we need to protect each other. And a guy like Amade needs to get the hell out of here, okay? He's done nothing, he says nothing, and he's a clown show when he comes to all these meetings. He always tells jokes. So here I am, I'm in it. Support me, we're gonna start working on the campaign tomorrow. Goodbye, Mark. Let me bring this back to Ray. One reason why I endorsed him, because my son, I went to Amade, in his office said it was disgusting that my son didn't take the shots as an officer in the United States Coast Guard. I just, you know that, Ray? And you know that too, right? Ray was with me when we went in there four times. And I just want you to know, let's get him elected to the United States Congress, but everywhere I go in the district, I will do everything I can to say support him, because Amade wouldn't vote the NDAA. He, he would not support and sign with the other congressmen who forced us not to force the shots on our military. And he wouldn't do it. Hey, I, that's it. I'm really mad at him.